A Vague Anxiety is an exhibition of emerging artists which reflects on concerns of contemporary society. These themes are explored through various mediums such as painting, sculpture, photography, installation and workshops. Moving sequentially through the rooms of Emma's galleries, the exhibition examines issues such as global warming and climate change, the rise of right-wing politics and hard borders, housing and the destruction of habitats, the digitization of intimacy and fragmentation of identities, the weight of history and childhood and the assault on innocence. The exhibition neither poses questions nor presents solutions or reflects on our present tensions. Sculptor Marie Farrington employs materials that are conceptually loaded within her practice. These include plaster, seawater, Indian ink, pollen, wax and used engine oil. These materials speak in multiple ways, both to art and to our place in the world. Pollen and wax conjure up thoughts of bees and colony collapse disorder, which threatens world food production on a massive scale. Sidine Gibson uh, thinks about the ways that human beings uh, affect and impact on the natural world. She gives agency to plants and insects, uh, as in this case a bumblebee, uh, but shows how these non-humans uh, uh, experience frustration and anxiety in their world. Included throughout the exhibition are works by Italian artist Cristina Bonello. Bonello paints sometimes real and sometimes imagined girls. They have a mysterious quality and we are unable to discern their age. They appear somewhere between childhood and maturity, their clothing often suggesting sophistication and fashion, a place in the world which does not fit their age. In each room of this exhibition, the portraits by Bunello serve as witnesses to what is happening, but on occasion they cannot see, or they turn their backs to events. Poster Dad and Pointers are images from Susanna Vavra's family photographic archive from the former East Germany, transferred onto canvas and combined with abstract painting. Pointers, comments on having to develop a sense of who could be trusted and who might be a spy for the Stasi, the secret police in East Germany. This work highlights that a culture of surveillance and a totalitarian state depends on the compliance of ordinary people and questions how individuals retain agency and power in such situations. In this room, the floor is covered by 20 square metres, a scale drawing of an architectural plan conceived by Plattenbau Studio a Berlin-based duo of architects. The floor plan corresponds exactly to a bedsit which they lived in in Ranala in Dublin. The plan allows the visitor to walk through their home, experiencing the claustrophobic and limiting nature of living in a confined space. The artists have fetishised the trappings of home by carefully drawing out and listing every item to be found in the apartment. The work behind me is a depiction of a high-rise building in the former East Berlin. The state attempted to flatten out society, to make everyone the same, to make everyone's house the same. But of course, individuals will always express their creativity in a very strong manner. So although every apartment behind me is the same, every home is different, and that is what they have captured here. The series of photographs by Helio Leon, seen in the painted picture frames, records life in squats and private homes at night in Istanbul and Barcelona. Leon has witnessed how, in underground and unregulated social spaces, society moves at a different pace. Attitudes towards identity, sexual freedoms and experimentation often act as a precursor to changes within wider mainstream society. Brian Teeling is a photographer from Dublin and his four series that we see in this room deal with a two-year journey through depression, sexual addiction and suicidal ideation. All of this occurred in the digital realm and was facilitated by apps. Uh, we really see how this has impacted one person's life and how in fact these concerns are universal. Susanna Vavra's personal story continues in Kinder Kurheim. The artist described herself as a sickly and emotional child which was not tolerated by the East German state. At the age of nine she was separated from her parents and placed in a state-run children's care home called Happy Future. The vitrine contains letters that Susanna received from her schoolmates while she was at The Cure. While the near-identical letters contain glimpses of nonsense and originality, they are mainly chilling in their uniformity and demonstrate how even children were subjected to control over their feelings and personal expression. 
In the courtyard, we see Auto Portrait by Brian Teeling. The installation incorporates a crashed car which has been repaired on the surface only, evoking thoughts of boy racer culture, performative masculinity as expressed through speeding or dangerous behaviour, and the veneration of material goods such as expensive cars, the work acts as a metaphor for unresolved trauma. Superficial repair may not remove deeper issues reflected in our everyday behaviour or attitudes.